Okay, so remember that we've dealt with a very clear definitions from IS32 on what is a financial asset, what is a financial liability, and what is an equity instrument. But sometimes there's a bit of a, a issue regarding this. When you see specific contracts, then it's not that clear from an issuer's perspective. So the person issuing the financial instrument or the company issuing the financial instrument, if you're dealing with an equity instrument or are you dealing with a financial liability? Sometimes it feels a bit fuzzy. Okay, and the specific cases where this sometimes comes up as an issue is when you deal with preference shares. Okay, so here you will have to look very, very, very in detail to the terms and conditions of those preference shares. Where you have contracts, so you've issued a contract, but you will not settle in cash, but you will settle that contract or you will make payment, not in cash, but in shares, so equity shares. Then it raises a question, is this then an equity instrument or is it a financial liability? And then the very funny one, and we're going to mention it here, we're not going to make a big issue of it, but is where you have a contract with some contingency. Okay, contingent, and they call it contingent settlement provision. Okay, and we'll mention this just quickly at the end. But just to briefly, when you see these three things, normally the issue comes up of, well, is it an equity instrument or financial liability from the issuer's perspective? Okay. So let's just recap on the concepts that you have to consider here when you see these types of things and you have to now apply your mind and determine if you're dealing with a financial liability or an equity instrument. Remember that the key thing that differentiates a financial liability from equity is the existence of a contractual obligation to deliver cash. Or financial assets. So with a financial liability you have that contractual obligation to give cash or financial asset and you don't have that with an equity instrument. So just think about your shares, shares that you've issued. There's no contractual obligation to deliver cash. Okay, another important concept that you have to remember is, is that IS32 tells us that we need to look at the substance of a financial instrument rather than its legal form to determine its classification. So to determine if we are dealing with equity or a financial liability. Okay, what does this mean? It means like, for instance, if you deal with preference shares, yes, it might appear in legal form as if it is a financial liability. But when you look at the substance, the nature of it, the how it feels in terms of the context of IS32, then you might come to a different conclusion. And that's why IS32 says you need to focus on the substance of it. Okay, so let's look at the first issue, preference shares, and we're going to do these two. Okay, these are the two common ones and common in the South African context as well. So We've discussed this already very briefly, but we're going to look at it a, a, a bit more in detail now. So we have redeemable preference shares. Okay, so these are not ordinary shares, it's preference shares. And when they are redeemable, it means that they actually have a specific date that they have to be settled at. Okay, so they would give you the date in the question. They would say these shares are redeemable on this date. Okay. So also, what is very important here within our South African context is, is that these redeemable shares normally have a cumulative dividend. Okay, so the cumulative dividend, so apart from having a redemption date, so a, a date that this contract comes to an end and has to be settled, so the capital has to be repaid, there's also a cumulative dividend. And this cumulative dividend simply means 
that there is a dividend every year okay on this dividend irrespective of the company paying it or not if the company does not pay the dividend then it accumulates or it roll forwards to the next roll forward to the next year but by redemption date you have no choice all accumulated dividends that you have not paid as a company has to be settled <clears throat> okay so it is a, a, a dividend that accumulates, okay, if you don't pay it, okay. So, as you can see, just looking at the substance of this, it feels like debt. Do you agree? Or loan. It feels like a loan. A loan has a redemption date. You have to repay that loan um, by a certain date. And you have to make interest payments on that loan. You cannot get out of it. So, there's a contractual obligation to deliver cash in the form of a principal amount at redemption date and also in terms of a cash payment in terms of dividend. You can do that either annually or on redemption date. Okay, so you can see just from this classification based on what we know about the definition of a financial liability that this redeemable preference share is a financial liability. Okay, so do you see substance is very important here? Then non-redeemable preference shares. So this means that we don't, we actually don't have a redemption date. It's open-ended. No redemption date. Okay. And usually in the South African context, the, um, re the non-redeemable preference shares don't have cumulative dividends so you don't have a right to a dividend every year it's usually discretionary okay meaning the the board can decide when and how it feels like paying a dividend on this can you see it feels like equity there's no contra contractual obligation to give cash um, because there's no principal amount that you have to redeem there's also no dividends that you have to pay in terms of a contract no so it feels like equity and it certainly is an equity instrument okay so this is something that comes up quite often in cti okay so you need to practice this it comes up usually as a discussion type question and then you have to um, uh, um, attempt this from the definition of a financial liability perspective. So telling or explaining clearly that if you have a contractual obligation to deliver cash or not. And from there you can conclude if you're dealing with a financial liability or an equity instrument. Very popular question. Then the second issue is contracts settled with equity instruments. So here you have a contract, you have to pay something in terms of this contract or you have to settle the contract in some way, but you're not going to give cash, you're going to give equity. So you're going to give shares, so you're going to pay in shares. So the company issues this contract, but they're not paying in cash, they're paying in shares. So the question is, is this an equity instrument or financial liability instrument? So you might be very tempted to say to me, oh, it must be an equity instrument because you're going to settle in shares. But the standard says, no, the fact that you're settling in shares does not mean that this contract is an equity instrument. You have to look a little bit more in detail to the definitions of what a financial liability is and what an equity instrument is. Okay, so, so the question is, if a contract is settled, settled with shares, not with cash, can it still be a financial liability or is it always an equity instrument? And let's just look at this example just to make sure that you understand what I mean. An entity obtained a short-term loan of 20,000. It is required to settle the loan within 60 days in as many shares that is equal <clears throat> sorry, to 20,000 rand. Okay, so you have to give shares, ordinary shares, to the value of 20,000 shares. Now the question is, is this a financial asset, oh, sorry, a financial liability or an equity instrument from the entity's perspective. Now the question is, 
to determine if you're dealing with a financial asset or a financial, oh, sorry, a financial liability or an equity instrument is to ask yourself what is happening to the number of shares that you have to deliver. Does it remain fixed? So is it unchanged or does it change as the, uh, sorry, that's correct actually. So does it change? Does the number of the shares that you have to give change over a period of time? If it remains unchanged, it means the number of shares that you'll give is fixed, then the contract is an equity instrument from the issuer's perspective. When the number of shares that you have to give in terms of the contract varies or changes, it is a variable number of shares, then the contract is a financial liability. So I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. So we have an entity, they have a short-term loan, they have to repay 20000 They have to settle this loan with shares, but the shares has to be equal to 20,000 Rand. Now, my question to you is, let's say on day one, the share price is one Rand. How many shares will you have to deliver to make up the 20,000? If the value or the market value per share is one rand per share on day one, you'll have to give 20,000 shares. Okay, let's say on day 60, the last day, okay, so remember you have to settle on day 60, your share performed very well, so now the market value of the share or the, the fair value of the share is two rand per share. How many shares will you have to give or deliver to make to get to 20,000 Rand? Well, it's 20,000 Rand divided by 2 Rand. So that means you will have to give 10,000 Rand, 10,000 shares. So do you see that the number of share actually changed? It went from 20,000 to 10,000. It means these shares are actually variable. It changes as the market price changes of the shares. Okay, so it's variable shares and we said if we're dealing with changing shares or number of shares that varies, that contract is a financial liability. So variable number of shares, that will give you a financial liability. So the conclusion is, even though you sh settled with shares yet, you didn't pay cash, you didn't pay um, uh, um, uh, with another financial asset, the fact that you did pay in shares, but those shares are variable, means that this is a financial liability. And if you go back to the IS32 definition of a financial liability, you will find there that it mentions where a contract is settled and a variable number of shares, um, it is a financial liability. So page back to IS32 financial liability definition and you will see that this is actually included uh, in the definition of a financial liability. So when will it be fixed? Well, it will be fixed if we didn't give an amount here, yeah? but that we said um, we're giving a fixed number of shares. So we obtained a loan of 20,000 and that we will give, instead of shares equal to 20,000, we say we will give shares, e um, uh, sh we will give a certain number of shares. So we say we will settle in fif with 15,000 shares. That's it. So we don't care what happens to the share price. It might be a loss for us or a loss to you the person that um, uh, holds the loan. So if we say, let's just um, clear this a little bit, sorry. So if we say, yeah, um, we're required to settle the loan within 60 days in, or by issuing 15,000 shares, it means the shares will remain fixed, so 
it won't change. We will give 15,000 shares irrespective of what the market does. In that case, this will be an equity instrument. Okay, great. So let's quickly do the last and the third issue, and that is the contingent settlement provision. So what does this mean? It means that there's some contingency attached to this a contract to say that we will only settle this contract if something happens. Okay, so the settlement of an issued financial instrument is dependent on some event. So we, we have a contract, and in terms of this contract, we have to deliver something. So this is a contract. This is the issue of the contract. And this issuer is the holder. And this issuer will only deliver in terms of this contract make a payment, for instance, in terms of this contract, if there is some condition met, some contingency met. So the question is, in cases like this, what are we dealing with? Is it a financial liability or an equity instrument? Now, the rules in terms of I-32 is, is if the condition is beyond the control of the issuer and the holder. So they don't control, oopsie, sorry, um, they don't control this condition. It is out of their hands, the issuer and the holder. If that is the case, then, for instance, if the condition is an increase in the market price of the shares of the company, that is beyond the control of the company and that has issued this instrument and also beyond the control of the holder. They cannot control what the market does. They cannot control if some event takes place in the market that might negatively affect the share price. So that condition is beyond their control. And if that is the case, then you're dealing with a financial liability. But if you're dealing with a, a condition or event that is beyond the control of the issue and holder, like for instance the market price increase, but it is so extreme or it is so unrealistic or unlikely that that will ever happen, then you are dealing with an equity instrument. For instance, if the condition is that the market price will increase by 50% and that has never ever happened in the history of this company. It means that yes, it is beyond the control, this condition, a market price increase is beyond the control of the issue and the holder, but it is so unlikely, it is so unrealistic, then it is classified as an equity instrument. Okay, so we can have a look here. We have X Limited. They issued a convertible debenture, and these debentures are only convertible at the end of three years. So we're going to illustrate this principle to you now. So these are convertible at the end of three years, but only if the revenue of X Limited increased by 10%. Okay. So if the increase is less than 10%, X Limited will redeem the debentures in cash. The condition is not highly abnormal. So it's not, th this increase is not abnormal or unlikely. So the, let's just look at this. So the growth of the revenue is beyond the control of X Limited and the holder. Okay, anything can happen that can affect that growth. It is beyond their control. I don't know what I put here. Let's just do that. So X is in a position where we have a condition that is um, not within the control of X Limited or the, um, the debenture holders. It is not an abnormal condition. So obviously the debenture is a financial liability because X won't be able to avoid delivering cash. Okay, so there's a conversion option here. So they could convert to cash. Okay, but they could also convert, sorry, they could convert to shares and they can also, if it's less than the 10%, then they should redeem it in cash. 